specifically the Kaisa frame, which I do expect to be just prioritized here uh, on, uh, on DLG's side. Uh, a team that actually was very willing to go deep into the champion pools, kind of was leaning very strong towards things like Diego, uh, as well as the Sejuani, but outside of that, it's, it's hard to really pin down uh, what to expect from the team. I do think that our typical KT drop to look at a strong lane for Keen BDD uh, with cousin something that can strap uh, towards the top side of the map, yep. aiming something self-sufficient. Particularly during the ship Kaiza era, which Kaiza could just be under a turret forever and, and play very easily, that was also something that he used uh, to, to great effect. Um, and I want to see what we get here for lands, because again, I think comfort for that player and him having a big game here is going to be absolutely good. Also, happy to see that Mira is back was uh, absent for a large part of KT's run uh, toward the later round of the split. Right, as we go for first pick, just a quick side tangent. If you're talking about something comfortable on hands, I mean, this guy plays anything and everything. I'm more curious to see if Khan gets taken like away here because for Arm, also another big pick. Alistar has been massive today as well. Yeah, while not always successful, I think just here we're showing the priority of Alistar in our first couple of race side drives. And I, I think knowing KT, they might want to go for the Alistar, but you have to break up the Lava Duo. Can't really give that over. Uh, simply takes away too many of the weaknesses that are normally associated with, uh, with the Zion lane. Yep. And it's going to be a continued reliance here on this Talia. I know Talia has mostly been a flex for KT. Would expect this to go towards BD. It's a pick that works really well with the style where it tries to play heavily towards the side lanes. Uh, we'll see if that's actually where it goes standing on the response from Miguel. And it's also a really good takeaway from Miguel on that note as well. This guy is supporting me. He flexes down to his side. Help never gets attention from him. So at least he needs a brother and comrade in arm to help give him some leverage. Uh, more importantly, B is a focus as well. So this time around, we're going to get the chase. Could go top, could go mid. But a lot of the time, that has been for Miguel. Chase Marco, obviously a, a very fair combination. Yeah, oh, absolutely. absolutely. I do think that the, the Marco is not as strong as it was. We've still seen this tournament does what it says on the box. For KT though, getting aiming on Kaisa I think is a really big win. I do think that aiming to me is, is a player that over the years has improved the, move, uh, improved the most on KT. I was, I was not a big fan of aiming. Uh, he was... Uh, Great at times, but then other times, you know, you know the, the Jackie Love Killer Instinct, where you're like, Jackie, no, but then he does it anyway. Aiming at a, a few of those as well, but with a, with a little bit less than the upswing. A few of them in the LPL too. Remember, aiming was on the yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, the time Zekker as well, so... And it's funny how these guys come in, and funny how these organizations end up meeting again as well. And, uh, but he, he didn't do any of that. I think his playoffs was actually the only one KT who looked like themselves. Yeah. And then we'll see if they're able to maintain that level, because I think high pressure situations have been in this player script tonight. Oh, yeah. At time, as we do see, the uh, Alistair, no surprise, and all of remains like. I feel, I feel like Norris has done second rotation every single game. game. It really <laughs> is, isn't it? He's, he's, he's good enough to be banned, but not to be picked in the first rotation. Especially against LPL support, I think, at the moment. Um, Chris yeah. the only one I'm a bit sus on, but he showed up with Leona, with Leona rather earlier on. But I guess on these are falling down, he's also taken away the calm. So to me, Jay Josh is for one of our best supports in our league, if not the best, honestly, at the moment. He's minimized. Tank team done their research while on the other side. They're thinking, hey, okay, we know BDD, as you said, Quiet Play, he's going to be taking this to towards me. Let's get rid of some of the engage options from a This feels like a special deal. I'll let you take it. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I love that. Cuz has uh, not pulled this one out in a while, but it is a pick that I think is very undervalued right now. Um, I think that obviously, uh, do need to make sure that you actually get for the other game as well. Really, the only like kind of steer engage for the lane is to try and back as well. Yeah. And, 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 and I do think that specifically the combination of Talia and Zach can run into some issues in the early game. Merch is really high value, and so is Amar. But at the same time, the key has been able to take off with because of picks like this is really, really a a big part of what makes the team so versatile throughout the summer split. Well, with that locked in, I mean, it's already spiced up the draft. BLG going for a different approach. I mean, B is someone who plays Harry top. He doesn't really play tanks outside of the Cassante. So it's not completely new, but it's not his perfect wheelhouse. A uh, little bit disappointing when we hyped up, you know. Wait, 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 w
I would have loved that from it. Yeah. But I, I think that this is a, is a good call. And, uh, yeah, I think ideally you want to go towards Gwen if you seem to be very successful against the Sanze, yeah, but that would leave you with a like, full uh, AP top side, which makes itemization particularly for Sanze and Maokai, like, like, very, very straightforward. On the flip side, though, BLG also very, uh, very... Uh, same damage profile, very AD focus, wouldn't surprise if he's gonna go for like the hybrid um, first strike, more yeah, yeah, still yeah, try and get some damage from there. Um, and looking at these two drops, I think that for KT, right, on my end you have lands and something that can roam, BD and something that can impact the map. Only point of worry for me is how well is he individually gonna perform, because I do think H is kind of needs to be top moments. And how is that mid jungle 2v2 for Cousin BD gonna go? So Leah Zach early on, bit rough. Yeah, a little bit rough, but again, look, I'm kind of just wondering what form KT gonna be. There's a lot of questions coming into this, I don't know. LCK fans will be saying the same thing. And it's strange because there's another party seeing the contrast between them and BLG. It's like, what form of BLG are we going to get in? Because last time we saw them, it was actually like LNG. It was a loss, it was a little bit disappointing, and then had a lot of time off. Of course, naturally securing their position thanks to points. So, a lot of questions hopefully to be answered, and we get to find out at the end of Swiss Day 1 here at Worlds. Who's seen Race 3? I love it. Yeah, I love it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a good, good one. To be honest, for about five, five seconds, seconds only, but it was in there. <laughs> really? <laughs> it can, yeah. My brain. Look at you. Sometimes, sometimes you know. Incredible. I have to get used to this. That's the first time. That's true. Right. With another Australian. Australian. I know. You walk out of LCK cars into LPL cars, but Australia is just riding everywhere. Yeah, yeah that was just okay. okay. Here we go. I'll feel forgiven. You'll get over it. Sure. I think you like me. We'll be right. But, yeah. I, I, I think, think it's a safe bet. Yeah. Yeah, I think it can make, make a statement. statement. Well, welcome nonetheless. Uh, BLG vs KT, as we were saying before. We've hyped this one up because these two teams, you know, expectations fell a little bit short in playoffs. It's third seed versus second seed, but remember that BLG finished third in playoffs too. So, because they qualified on points, a lot of people are saying LNG are our second best team. In yeah, terms of, you know, how, how we rounded, rounded out the split, split and BLG are out third. And, and this, this is kind of the, uh, and, and, and you, you never, never know, know, right, but KT, how, how they looked against Gen G, uh, seemed like it was, it was so much of a more comfortable match for them, where their strengths, I think, their mid game acceleration, and, and the way that they can break open games in early game, yeah. uh, while still having a really consistent team fight, and, and side lane impact, was, was, was something that Gen G seemingly not was able to, to really deal with, and, Obviously, uh, and I will defend the decision from KT to pick T1, because T1, you gotta, you gotta understand, they, even, even knowing that Faker came back, right, they, they looked really rough, even before, when he was still in, uh, it's, it's something that I don't think you can hold against KT, but um, it does leave a lot of questions of what if, what if they had just gone for the obvious choice, uh, Faker uh, would have gone from there, but uh, we don't know, and we never will, and we'll see if they can find a return to form for themselves here today. today. You hope so. Again, BLG is hard to ask. ask. Uh, I think more importantly, when well, you're talking about play styles there, just a quick note for anyone who didn't watch the LPL, BLG, this is a team that skirmishes very heavily. Uh, they're not the best team fighting team. That goes to JG. It's quintessential. Uh, quintessential. LPL. That's right. That's right. And look, you look at this draft and you're like, what does this team do very well? Well, there's going to be a lot of fighting, a lot of skirmishing coming through. Thank you, gentlemen. Don't forget it. There's one thing you need to do out there as well. Don't forget to connect your League of Legends account with Prime Gaming to grab the exclusive extermination. Experimentation. Damn, so close. The emote, of course. You know what I'm I mean, talking I've, about. I've, I've seen enough Heimer at, Heimer at World 2022. Like, I I don't fault you for that. That was, that was not a fun hey, matter. You all get what I'm saying anyway. Um, <laughs> Heimer wins line, so I guess it works out anyway. But I'm not sad that Champion is gone. He, he didn't really allow for a lot of uh, interactive gameplay. Very true. Um, looking at the early game here, we do see Aiming also going for Call, which is uh, uh, about as face up of a I don't expect a lot to happen in lane as we can possibly get. Yep. And I want to see to what extent BLG is able to actually punish Cuz. Because I do think that if Zach just gets to uh, get to the very least level 6, but ideally to you know level 9 when Elastic Slingshot is maxed, becomes so much harder for a lot of these champions on BLG to really play the game. Bindo starting off very well here in the early game. Keen yeah. struggling to pick up the CS under the turret. 
I mean, this is what we know Bin for, a great laner. And again, Akeem might have been regular season hero, but we know recency there as well. Bin oh, yeah. has a recency, Keen doesn't. So I think it's more important to know that so far expectations being hit in the top lane, while Kuz has hit level four, has the extra range on slingshot here, Chronicler. That angle force of is so genius, but your gal's like, nah, never mind. Gates out, brings it back, shove! Only mildly in the air. Oh, I, I think because of the position of the wall there, Yagao didn't actually get thrown onto the E. Wouldn't have made a difference, right? Okay. Uh, early Talia damage is uh, maybe a not, not something. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I think, you know, yeah, I think Yagao, he's, he's cool like that. He'll just... It, well, it pay respect. It, 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 no, I don't, I don't know if no. you would. I don't think you have to. Like, early early uh, Talia really is... I, I say as someone who plays a lot of jungle Talia, it, it doesn't feel as good as no. it used to, unfortunately. Um, does mean that Kaz is able to get a little bit of early action going. Also picked up the bot side. Scott also... Won't be falling too far uh, behind in that regard. We'll see if he's actually able to do anything, because I do think that trying to gang the Cassante early on when the Atrox doesn't really have any items yet is uh, somewhat of a tough ask. True. Very hard indeed as Yagao runs out with Mana in mid. And Bin will just look for the shove in top side. Still that CS leader, but it's impressive that we start the game off five minutes in. Bin is already doing exactly what you want. I have flashbacks to this, and they're not good at no. MSI. Oh, Shun no. level four in bot lane. Yeah. That happened a lot, man. Quite creative with his angles. I mean, he's on a ward, but KT not respecting. Flash burnt by Lahens. Shouldn't did burn his own, but we get a summon it out of the bottom lane at the very least. Yeah, I'm not, not too sure about that one, uh, Lahens. Uh, I, I do think because Sean actually had to flash, might be calling maybe on that. It's, it's a maybe, right? But I, knowing, yeah, knowing that the... Uh, the Maokai is there, it feels like he should be able to uh, just absorb the pressure and, and buy space for Kuz. Because again, Kuz just wants to farm yep. as much as he possibly can. Uh, while Shun it does indeed go uh, for the uh, Giant's Belt first, so might be heading towards at least a Demonic Embrace, but didn't go for a strike. So it does mean that uh, some of the damage, I think we saw it in uh, the game of G2 against D+, right? Yep. Uh, how much that still could do in the late game. Kuz is just going for the same gank again. Same. Yagao's path, it's like he's expecting it to come through. He wants that cannon, but hang on this time, the flash is gone. If you don't, if it doesn't work the first time, just try again. Yeah, and an extra level on your slingshot, easy peasy. Gets the flash there now, we'll have to see whether they're actually able to aggressively punish this lack of flash from Yagao, as Elk and On might be looking to contest the Dragon here, but with Shun on the other end of the map, don't think that they can really get too much going. Aiming's still catching the wave though, Ooh. Interesting angle here. Oh, but he has ult. No vision gain. Cuz now appears out of nowhere. On's like, hang on a minute, there's four people surrounding. Weaver's wall's been picked up. BDD with his level six uses it well, but on now flashes over the wall. The shove not connecting. They dissipate, but hang on. Elk with goes to shattering strike. They're turning a 2v4. Elk's out. The feathers one more, but Cuz holds on to the bloblets. And Elk was feeling that one. Still a really big success here because. The gank is absorbed, no dragon goes over to KT, Yagao gets unmatched wave, uh, waves in in mid, That's right. able to pick up a plate as well, and Shun is able to just farm his top side of the jungle, now 12 CS ahead here, and KT going in aggressively there, but a little bit disjointed there, right? You had BDD on one side of the, uh, of the, uh, the wall, and then you had Kuz on the other end, but not really able to actually lock down, uh, and you have aiming in the hands without ult, so they don't offer too much in terms of uh, early damage or playmaking. Yeah. And the first play from KT, not quite working out. I mean, again, Kuz has been really creative with his angles. I think you could say the same happened again, but as the all-in comes through, Lahens tries to set up for aiming. Problem is, no quickness there, nor any damage to follow through. And On just holds on while he waits for Welk to Elk rather to return to lane, while BDD, that ulti's not available, but he's starting to try and move around the map. And this is what I love, you know, BDD and Yagao, I, I know they share some similarities. I expect this is Yagao. Talia, he moves across. He moves that pressure to one of the side lanes. Uh, BDD doing exactly that here in this opening game. Oh, Shun has his ultimate available. He can match it across. Aiming, though, just picked up six, though. On goes for the all-in. Lahens just walks it out against Rakan. Even without the flash, it is pretty hard. And while the previous play was absorbed by the bot lane of BLG, KT now returns the favor. And immediately, with the shove there for Keen, they're able to start off the Heralds. KT looking to pick up an early objective. We'll see if BLG try to go for a response or just fight them. Just do that. I mean, this team skirmishes all the time. Shouldn't held on to his ulti. Bin has his with Flash as well. Herald's going to go down, but look at the Shock Blast damage. 
Zoning the eye while aiming onto Elk. The cleanse out immediately. The flash is there. Forward he goes. Second skin. First blood for aiming. Take that BLG, he says. And aiming, getting a first blood on the Kai'Sai is going to make KT fans extraordinarily happy. Yep. This is the champion he kept getting. I think it was like a 10-game win streak. And everyone was like, why? Why does he keep getting Kai'Sai? Able to over uh, punish the overextending Elk. Now, BLG was able to deny the actual pickup of the Herald, but they won't get the objective themselves. But with aiming, picking up a kill on the bot side of the map, I think KT is still going to be very happy. A lot of CS denied here as well to Elk on trying his best to uh, pull the wave back so that the uh, gank doesn't hurt as much. But big win for KT. It's 500 gold lead off the back of that as well. Yeah, as you well, mentioned, yeah, aiming on Kaiser. Getting a lead is just naturally something to get excited for. I'm sure the KT fans out there can agree. But more importantly, I think it helps with this next setup coming through. Dragon's still not touched. I guess we can talk about it in a second, and we'll see how this solo kill followed out. It's it's just a bait, right? Aiming uh, not actually on any vision. The hands also was uh, was pathing towards bot. Looked like he was actually responding. What happened here? Yeah, they didn't. I, I, I did time out, as mentioned. So, uh... Good job on BLD on that one because they were a member up because Lahens wasn't actually there. Yep. Okay. But with the kill going over, I think KT's still going to be not too unhappy about it. It's been. Oh, hang on. Keen at half HP. Is the World Ender going to be popped out? Not yet. Looking for the flip of the wrist. Gets Keen, but again, holds on to that all out. Bin continues to do well in this lane despite what's happening in the bottom side. As we continue to wait for this dragon, a little bit later than what we've seen for the rest of today, with 10 minutes in, and both teams trying to pivot around. That's a long way for Kuz to go if he wants a sausage roll. But he's just going to walk out for that one, and Elk stands his ground. Pretty sure he was also standing on vision, so good job on Elk, making sure that he absorbs that. Kuz does have his passive, but uh, doesn't really want to get caught by on here. On a ward for the time being. Slingshots out. Shattering strike zones. BLG thinking about starting it, luring them in on the scuttle crab. On takes away the, the uh, blast cone as well. KT looking at this one. Elk's tagged on the back end. Lahans looking for the engage. Cuts is there. Teleport as well. Elk immediately ults and he's about to turn into Flubber for the time being. I mean, Cuts is out of action, but can he rejuvenate? No. And the engage from on is massive as well. Quickness out. KT burning flashes left, right, center, but should now twist it advance. Aiming's going to drop down. And just as we're singing the praises of KT, he fight back. Really big play there by BLG, able to turn around the engage from KT. KT seemingly not on the same page. And crucially there, Keen's TP was a couple of seconds off. Uh -huh. The moment that Bin channels his teleport, I think KT rightfully so says, hey, we, we can't win this, we have to back off. But at that point, the damage is already done. Cause has already gone in, the follow-up isn't really there. And yeah, again, look at the timing here, right? Great setup as well, Bin already has priority. And even with BDD making his way over, this is way too early from Cuz. If the Talia is already there and you have some threat, maybe that's enough. Instead, lands BDD, get rooted up by the ultimate from Shun, making an easy setup for On. And by the time Bin joins, that's the KT are just trying to get out of there. And Elk picked up the kill from that as well. So, one apiece here for both AD carries. The difference is that aiming is getting to the item first. Close for Elk, it must be. To mention that. There's going to be a bit more power here coming through from KT's AD carry. The one upside for KT and the reason why I think the gold still skews slightly towards them yep. uh, is that Keen was able to both alleviate a lot of the damage that was done in terms of CS because Bin TP'd away while also picking up, a, I think it was one plate, maybe two. Uh, he had not gotten a whole lot done, Is on. Okay, Kaz going to be lured in, but this is pretty good for KT. On tries to jump on down. Remember, Kaz has no passive, but On has bitten off way too much. The aggro gets punished, and KT know just what to do. This time around, going Again. in on their own works. Oh, show knows! All right, Kaz back on in, and look at the follow-up. Wow! And he joins in. This map movement from oh. the Zack is on point. Elk, reinforcements are on the way. You go. It's almost there. I don't know if that's enough to actually Kaz call the play. Kaz doesn't, doesn't need the passive, does he? Elastic slingshot now that it's down. Oh, Elk can feel happy for the time being, but Yagao gets zoned out. KT still putting on the pressure points. Well, Keen roams down to mid to swap this turret plate. And I think Yagao made the right call because making sure that Elk can still catch that wave is really big. Uh, but it also means that with Keen roaming down towards mid, he doesn't find anyone. He's able to trade plates relatively even. And we see 
Plates dropping in about a minute or uh, about half a minute. We'll see if uh, we get, get more picked up. As here, Cuz, he has been so active. Sure, yeah. one time, they don't really work out. But this is really what you're looking for. This is what KT was able to consistently let one, two of Cuz and Lahens going in aggressively, setting up plays, and then it's aiming in BDD to get to reap the spoils. And it's crazy that I'm, I'm casting BLG right now, and I'm like, KT are out <laughs> 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 doing this. Let's try it for English better. They are being more proactive than BLG. I, I didn't think I'd say it. Hey, you're Australian. You don't, yeah. you don't, oh, we don't, don't have to, yeah, speak, don't have to English. speak English. No, you're good. Uh, and and this is what I uh, what I think is also how a lot of the KT games look. And if you only watch LCK in playoffs, you didn't really see this team. Yep. But if you watched any of summer, uh, now we're getting flashbacks. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think the thing that was really big as well, their only match they lost was a match uh, in the first week against Shenji that had a lot of uh, other factors as well. Um, and outside of that, they look like by far the best team. We'll see if they're able to keep it up, though. Yep. Because uh, can never count out an LPL team when it comes to fighting. No, you definitely can't. BLG will keep smacking. Just but keep trying. At the very least, look, being a thousand goal behind ain't great. You saw the Mastercard lane economy before. A thousand ahead, or 1,200 to be specific for aiming. Still looking good on his Kai'Sa. As KT are getting more than that. Cuz picks up the Rift Herald. It looks like mid might be open or at least trying to open the map. Cuz threatening and trying to be flexible. I mean, that's the thing as well. He's been so flexible. He's been ganking Yigal over and over this game. It's been the bot lane ganks that Elk and On have been suffering by. I wonder when Bin gets his medicine because surely Cuz at this point uh, go to any of these lanes and find success. And Cuz also now maxed out the Elastic Slingshot, right? So yep. it's going to be a really big threat for the backline. Elk, of course, does have a lot of innate safety with his ultimate, but if you have to press your ultimate every time a Zac jumps on you, not going to be feeling too good. We will see, though, like once we actually get to the uh, team fights with KT having this lead, to what extent we're able to use this Aatrox. It's kind of the odd one out for me. Uh, I, I do think that the backline axes of Zac combined with Keen, who can then make his way over and aiming, obviously, with Kai's I can... Yeah then join the backline dive. Um, in theory, I really like it, but then you look at what is on the opposite side and the, the counter engage and, and, and kind of ability yeah. to absorb pressure of particularly Maokai, Kisante, and Zaya. Still, a lot of power there for BLG uh, when it comes to the team fights. But how scary is the pick as well, the range at which that can come through? I know we've seen Kuz early on play through. Oh, the Zach? Oh, yeah. When, when Zach obnoxious. pairs up with Talia, you know, because early on you're like, Zach Talia early, not as great, but now with levels oh. under their bed belt and items as well you're like well that duo can kind of one shot and and find an opening in this game like they've already done as teleport comes through i guess i want to try and force it around the dragon chronicle up it's going to start off with a magnus storm down but on until oh, 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 well. there's cuz again oh, right on. in the back as elk sends the feathers out to asgard oh, no. he's already picked up the kill to make him go zoom zoom as aiming no. Elk almost finds the kill oh. blg are running for their lives they don't know what they've run into and uh, initially when a TP came in, I was a little worried for Keen. Yep. Uh, BLG looking ready to respond, but it felt like only On was actually in a position to do some damage towards this Aatrox. And then that counter engage from Kuz, the amount of Freddy he was able to put on the back line, immediately forced a response. Hextech. Oh, that's my favorite. Oh. I love Hextech. Did you put so. that in your pickums as well or something, did you? No, no, Cloud, because I'm an, I'm an LCK uh, guy. I, was, I so said that I before Nevedius. Yeah. I knew you guys yeah, would. No, I, of course, I had to. Um, but Hextech, I think Hextech gates are my favorite addition to the game. Agreed. Actually. In like the last, I don't know, four tank. years. It's so good. It just, it, there's only upsides, right? It, it yep. speeds up objectives, it enables plays. Creative plays at that, right? It's so good, and especially when you're like, oh, Baron play, everyone died, but guess what? They're there in 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. So we get to see more action, yeah. Well, with that coming through in the game, that means we get to keep speeding things up, and I will say, you know, KT have been the ones doing that so far. It's 2k gold lead for them. And we'll look at this single play. You were saying On was in position, but unfortunately the rest of BLG weren't really. Yeah, it feels like some split comms here, right? Because if Shun also jumps onto Keen, I think they can CC chain him. Yeah. The rest of KT is so ready, though, and Cuz forces immediately the rest of the backline to retreat. Lahens has a lot of offensive pressure, and by the time aiming jumps in, fight has already been won. Due to them uh, being able to t kill a target early, it's been... He's in trouble, one versus two. The Weaver's Wall cuts him off, but he flashes over the top. But Keen, without his summoner, can't chase up. Still, you get a summoner out of a Kassante. Feels like a big win. 
I'm just happy to be BDD back at Worlds. Like, if you're a BDD fan, 2022 was a really rough year. Uh, struggled a lot with long COVID on the Nongshim team, where the expectations at the beginning of the year yep. were pretty good. And particularly after his, uh, I think, unexpected and, and really iconic overperformance at Worlds 2021. It sure. was uh, it was a tough year. Seeing him come back and actually have the impact on the map the way he did in LCK regular season makes me very happy. It's really good to see. We'll see if KT can really build a decisive lead from here. Because the 2k gold lead obviously going to be happy about that. I think aiming in particular being accelerated is a really big thing. Yeah. And generally when teams start falling behind in, in side lane tempo against KT, it gets really dicey, particularly with the TD, which I'm sure BLG uh, have used themselves a lot as well. A lot, a lot. Again, I'm usually saying that about, you know, teams that fall behind BLG it continues to ramp up. But I think more important more important than our rivalry than the LPL versus LCK. I have to sit here and be impressed by by KT because again, it's been a while. You know, as you were saying through playoffs, through what we've seen of KT, you know, coming through his third seed, we're getting that regular season power, and, and yeah. that's what impresses me the most. That's what gets me excited for the rest of world, and at least the rest of their run. Regardless of win or loss, at least this is a great opening for a team that we have high expectations of if we stop watching before playoffs. And we'll see if they're able to keep it up. Uh, uh, KT fans are, uh, as mentioned, a superstitious bunch. Uh, do not get the drop on Yagao there. That uh, definitely yeah. was expecting some stretching strike shenanigans to happen there. But see if they can close out. Generally, in these type of positions, uh, with a comp as comfortable as this, KT have been very consistent in the LCK in closing out games. See if uh, BLG are going to be able to equalize that account. I do think that until we get a lot of Drake stacking built up uh, for KT, they're really going to have to respect the threat towards Baron yeah. with the amount of damage that are, uh, is available from the BLG, particularly uh, from Alvin. Well, Yagao as well, I'll throw into the mix. Almost got that Mirror Mana fully stacked yeah. up. So two item on the Jace. We've also got a Thornmail from Bin to negate a lot of that power. And when we have Navori Quick Blades, for aiming, you can see who it's targeted towards. The Aatrox, of course, from Keen on top of that. <clears throat> and I know, you know, our player matchup was aiming versus Elk. And it's still going to be quite interesting, even though aiming is at two items here and has a lot more gold than Elk right now, Elk is getting towards his second two. We are going to have very powerful scaling ADs uh, to uh, hover again that build on aiming. And of course, it's going to scale so well. And I love it because these guys are huge. I don't know, we can just highlight, we can literally every go through lane. every yeah. matchup. Let's just go through them all. Yeah. Shouldn't versus Cars do next. It. I think oh, I it, makes, it makes sense. But I, this is one of the matchups today where you're like, you know, these players individually are so talented. And something that I think was, was on my mind in the mind of a lot of LCK fans at the beginning of the day was what form of, of some of the LCK teams, particularly of, of D plus and KT, are we going to see? For D plus, we're actually going to hit all we're of them! I, I, yeah. Amazing. Love that. And, and here you see as well that when it comes to uh, Kuz actually getting it in gold, not really. He hasn't really been picking up a lot of the kills. Zelf might be in trouble here. BLG bottom line, it depends. There's a flash from like right. instant reaction. Inhuman, maybe, but there's a flash away as Kuz follows up the double trouble on re engages. But it's dangerous with the feathers flying on the Kuz. A huge as BLG are trying to take the fight. Keen in the middle of whoop whoop. Sean looking for the flash, finds a kill. BLG back in this has been now finally shows up the all out there. BDD caught out as well. And you can never nap against BLG. And Elk knew something was up. I'm telling you, he had his finger on that flash key. He did. But didn't know if it was going to be Lance. Didn't know if it was going to be Cuz. KT, they're still contesting this. Yagao has flash. Lehens might be a recon, so he should be fine. Five. You're exactly right there. The poke comes through. Okay, they're not contesting. KT said back again. They can't anymore. Dragon picked up. And I mean, Elk, this is why he comes I don't in close. Like this one of our best team fighting 80 carries. How good was this reaction? Oh. Actually able to get away there, then flashes, and then this is where things go dire as uh, Keen goes in trying to help Cuz, but then Keen is up by himself. It's the split decision that we saw earlier from BLG, this time for KT, even with aiming in full health, they're saying, hey, we've been teleporting in, we gotta respect. And that means two members are given up. Drake goes over and Gold is that back. even. Yes, it is, making things interesting. Of course, Elk did quite a bit.
apparently so did Shun as well as Baron getting started. All right, Chronicler, we're making things more interesting. They're really going for it. <laughs> it's not traditionally a KT move to just start the Baron. It's more of a T1 thing, but we'll see if they can yeah, execute is. on this fight. The poke's there. Cards isolated, though, for the time being. Bin has his number. He's got Flash, and he's got the ulti up again as well, but Cuz gets out with the slingshot. Ladies and gentlemen, that ain't great. KT are burnt down, and BLG now trying to think about it. Do you want to make sure that you don't try and, and flip a Baron against Zack? He's one of the most iconic, uh, you know, the, the over the Baron wall drive-by steals. Still, though, we're seeing KT slipping back to some of the old patterns. Oh, aiming. They're setting up a trap for Elk here. He does have his ultimate available, but he's not going to walk in. And KT won't be given an opportunity to take him down. No, indeed. And I have to be honest, you know, again, this back and forth in the game, I feel like KT and BLG have been hyping up how close these teams are. We've been hyping up how important this matchup is to start world because their end wasn't ideal. Against LNG, against, against T1, I'm sorry to say. They gave us entertaining games, but it's not what we wanted to see. But at the very least, as we come to this point in the game where Baron sits and stares us in the face, we can see what these guys are like for now. It's nice of you to join me for the last one. You know, hey, great last time. one of the day. Yeah, hey. it's delivering. It is. And I feel like some of the games today have been barn burn no, barnstormers, to quote. And this one, this one, the biggest storm I've seen so far. Well, maybe. I, I, I do think that the game, you know, some people might look at this, this score and see four kills and four kills at 25 minutes and think, not a lot has been happening. But those, those people, they're wrong. They're, they are they wrong. They don't know. What do they know? As, nothing. Well, I mean, I don't know about nothing, but they definitely little, don't know about bit, this game. A little bit, then. A little bit. <laughs> I know that Kaz is getting ready to angle on in. I mean, oh, BLG, he's looking. BLG are going into the enemy jungle, but Kaz is always there. And that's why I love these wards that you see BLG put down, right? Like True. these continuous wards, like look, one on Krugs, now one on Raptors. Because you know for a fact that Cuz is going to be looking, and if you know the Zek is coming, makes preempting it so much easier. I do think one of the big issues for both these teams is that with how good the engage is on either side, actually starting on a, a, uh, up an objective can feel like bait. Because if you're the one tanking the initial brunt of Baron damage, right? If you're the one who is clumping up, trying to stay safe from the opposing team, then one big ultimate from on. One big elastic slingshot from Cuz can spell uh, a lot of disaster oh, in yeah. a very short amount of time. And again, not expecting this pick to come out. There's very few Zacks in the world. One I would throw in is Tarzan from LNG. Of course. Who historically was just amazing. Uh, was this time on Griffin where he pulled that out a few times? It was kind of the meta around the time. Going a little bit back now. I, I love Zack. I'm happy, oh, uh, so I'm happy he's picked. And uh, happy to see the champion diversity shoot up still as all aiming is level 12. Yeah, because Bin is confident in this matchup. He's winning it out. But until the ult comes through, until aiming comes through, now you're in trouble. Bin getting out. He's got about a million dashes, but is it enough for aiming? Oh, no, don't, 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 don't. They're still doing so much work. There's a the flash from aiming. One more, and Bin's down. But KT of over aggressed here as you go. Trying to jump in, but big brother Keith. Nice. Down nice, the nice. Oh. Oh. Welcome to the party. Oh. It's huge though. BDD coming in clutch, but now Shun ready to cover with the ulti. Oh, nice, nice. Covering again. These guys are free <laughs> forever as On brings them together, but it's up to Elk to bring the damage. He needs to get close, but he's scared of Lahens, of Kuz, of even aiming in the wing. It's messy. It's a two for two in the end, but it looks so good for KT. It's just a two for two, but it's mayhem. Hysterics. Absolute. Both teams going all in. You know, teleports coming in, reinforcements are called upon. By the end, I think it's BLG that will have priority towards this dragon, but with Keen having teleport available, as does Bin, and Hexgate's on the map, we'll see if KT try to contest, because if not, then by the end of all of this, it will be BLG getting out ahead, right? Yep. Abel as all oh, lands. Is he gonna be in trouble? Oh, they're gonna start oh, Nash. Sneaky pulling Baron. the trigger! It's the Hexgate! 28 minutes in, you said it made the game interesting. Chronicle, you're on point with this. 
behind Lehens is showing. He's like, all right, we're trying to contest. He flashes over Yagao, now interested in the meat. But they look at this. Know. This is the bigger prize. KT have outsmarted, outthought. BLG caught by surprise while Lehens is grinning out. from ear to ear. The Baron. Oh, oh my God. God. It doesn't cancel it. <laughs> all five with Baron. Thank you very much. Oh my god. Lehens continuously staying there to ensure that BLG think that they're going to contest. Love that. As we go back to this play, so Bin stalls this out so well, right? Actually getting a knockback and aiming, buying so much time, and even though he eventually ends up going down, so much is invested by both Keen and aiming. And then here is where you think, okay, BLG have this, but then the amount of damage, and even with aiming, taking that one turret shot, him stepping back from Elf, and then able to stay alive even with the feathers coming down. Really, really big. But then Shun, earlier today, really nice dodge there with his W on the re engage. And then at this point, uh, Cousin Lions don't have damage. Right? So they're not able to actually get anything on. Aiming yeah. standing at, he wants to join, but he can't. But then the fact that. They make it look like they're contesting. Is and even Lahens can... That's the it, most Lahens moment, man. That guy's yeah, a troll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, sh I'm, I'm shocked he's not emoting. Oh, man. Red Bull Baron power play. It's already at two and a half. KT, the big brain move, has led them back into an advantage in this game. Now, BLG have moved to Soul Point, but that's three and a half minutes away. What is this Baron going to take? Because already you can say that aiming's a big deal. Oh, yeah. BDD, three items strong in this Talia as well, is going to pop someone. Now, aim aiming is a big deal. I'm also worried because he has a GA. Aiming has been very trustworthy, yeah. even in this game. But I see that. Nice. And uh, I I'm a little worried, but as long as his Baron buff is there, KT can keep up this pressure. And that's really ballooning the gold with the pickup of the inner turret. Sure. And we do see BLG obviously able to match in the mid lane with the wave clear of the Elk. But outside of that, the rest of the team not going to have the best of time. Great defensive wards though, so no one should get caught here. And that should be the end of KT's Baron power play. But they are back towards that about 3k gold lead, but yeah. with soul points in BLG's hands. Yeah, it's a 4k Baron power play, by the way. I mean, again, huge swing of momentum. Yeah. And I've been impressed. Mm. It's cool because, you know, obviously I don't cast KT normal. Obviously I don't cast LCK. It's cool coming into this well, and being well, like, man, from what I saw on VODs, from what I saw on regular season, world-class players like this. We've already talked up BDD. We've talked up aiming, especially on his Kaiser. Kaz has been legendary for me in some of the early ganks to get the momentum rolling. Yeah. This Zac pick, I think it caught us by surprise. I think it caught BLG by surprise, to be quite honest. And it is very in line with KT. They are a team that is very happy to just do their own thing. As we now see KT trying to set up a lot of pressure here. Yep. Don't have the Baron buff anymore though, so Elk definitely going to be able to just clear out. And yeah, Bin not really the target that you want to try and dive. So, nice. Right. Wait, Bin, what is he doing? The shut back though, Bin gets the half HP with the all in, the all out is there. BLG fighting under that inner turret. Going golden, going into GA. Mm -hmm. now caught up here as well. Maybe KT weren't expecting oh, the Spanish Inquisition. BLG are chasing them out. Where did that come from, Chronicler? It's Bin making the magic happen. Finds aiming. I'm going to take responsibility for that one. I haven't told <laughs> even with the GA. He just what? ends up going down, and those kills are really big because they will allow BLG to set up for this soul point. Hextech soul so oh. valuable. It's yeah, Bin sets it up, and initially it looks like there isn't enough damage follow up, but between on uh, as well as Shun, they're able to lock him down, and Keen isn't there. There's no teleport for this Aatrox. A couple of no knock ups could have changed everything there, but instead BLG smell a moment of weakness, go all in. And that flash Q from Bin might net them the dragon, which in turn could be the game decider because Hextech Soul is so obnoxious to play into. Just when I let my guard look down. I mean, look, gold difference over time. Powered by AWS to tell us that it's, it's going up and down. It's swinging up and down. Gold's near even again. In fact, BLG for some reason have a lead. Look at that. That looks like an LPL Sunday. That's perfect. It is perfect, isn't it? I mean, BLG to their fighting breath, really. And as you said, it's about the soul. So Chronicler set us up 
because we have almost full automated carry on KT. They're still really strong, but the problem is no GA there. Elk now has his. And that's something that I don't know if KT can deal with. Elk has flash GA and ultimate is level 16. So consistently trying to shut down this Zaya is going to be tough. Oh, good pick though. Oh. Onto on Magnusorm use early supports just dead KT. He's gone. Brilliant pick. And that, I think BLG, yeah, just the board. You don't need to fight to the death over this track, guys. <laughs> You're telling you BLG. don't need to fight they over will. to the death. It's BLG. Nice. They look for the steal, they don't find now. Keen for the angle, they've got the numbers advantage, but they're looking for the pick. As he goes, Golden BLG. Are they in a bad oh. spot? No, the answer is absolutely no, but the healing is mm -hmm. absurd. All out over wow. the floor. Keen runs for his life, and Bin is ready to play budget Aurelia. KT run away. I cannot believe. BLG, we're going to take that 5v4. Well, BLG immediately turning that into tempo towards mid here. Again, KT wasn't sitting at soul point, so they can give that one up. Still able to get something out of that on. Getting caught there means that KT, at the very least, is able to prolong the soul going over to BLG. And both teams, again, it's the Hexgates already at the Baron Pit, ready to go another round. Although I'm pretty sure that this time BLG not going to let them have it so easily. Are you counting the Barons? How many are we up to in this one? It's the second one, right? Yeah, second or is it third? I mean, I had this with Venius too. Games like this and you're like, man, how many Barons? How long have we been here? There's so much back and forth today. And to finish off Swiss Day 1 at Worlds. Ooh. I don't think you could ask for a more perfect end. Regardless of, uh, you know, who ends up losing this game, I think the, the people that might feel like the loser, who, whoever has to face off against whichever team loses. Agreed. Uh, because it's looking rough. Gaming, oh. as mentioned, uh, has been able to stay up. But at this point, like 16 to 70k gold, it doesn't make that big of a difference. His TA is still on cooldown as well. And with the gold basically that even it's all going to come down to can you find access to that backline right aiming and bdd on the side of kt yagao and elk on the side of blg yep. if they stay alive in a fight if they don't get jumped on then you're fine but like the cc chains for both these compositions are disgusting right because it's like maokai kasante and rel <laughs> versus atrox zach rakan and talia yeah it's not fun! No, nah, it's really not. Someone's gonna stop moving. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> why it's important okay. that we kind of take care of summoners. I mean, Keen, without his flash on the Aatrox, okay. Dunk down potential or follow up engage. Absolutely. I think another one there is Shun. Uh, I'm not sure of the timer on it. We've got about 20 seconds, maybe less, on his flash on the Maokai to get into the back line too. So, all important counters. And we get to that point in the game where it is so important to start tracking those minute differences. Uh, I would say a minute, maybe not minute, but a significant one is the fact that GA is almost up for aiming. Yeah. How no. much longer do you reckon we have on that? I don't know. I think that BLG might be looking to, to go in on a big engage to try and force KT to fight before that GA is up. Yeah. Even though it wasn't of any value in the last fight, generally, it allows aiming mm -hmm. to play so much more aggressive. Do you know, they don't have any vision in the pit, but they do have the little ward outside. So they have a pretty good idea. The BLG isn't actually going for this as Keen, doesn't have flash! Oh, it's a flash again, Bin might be doing it again, but this time it's onto the Aatrox. Mobility, his friend, he gets popped back, and BDD tries to help out his brother, but he gets blasted out, massive shutdown, is aiming! Ulted in, but he's isolated! The wall is not his friend either! He'll it's take it down, though, is on! Disrupts the other back line, Elk ulting once again onto Kazu, flashes in, gets feathered down, but in the backside, aiming is dead, but that GA is all the difference! Elk survives, Cuz is out of there. BLG making a one for two has now been once again. Has got the blades out and KT have to run for their lives. I do think that Lahens BDD and Cuz still being alive might be enough. Okay. We'll see if they want to risk it. Zach still opportunity is still here with the E. Is KT going to go for it? Right now it looks like they're not. Just going to give this one up and try and get a reset in for the uh, Hextech Soul yep. instead. And again, it's been. These flashes on Kasate every time. Able to set up the play. Keen getting caught out there. Doesn't let the flash as you already highlighted. And even with the healing, it's not Malil. enough. And then that's Duskblade proc. Ends up being such a big difference maker. Aiming in no man's land. The rest of his team not able to get quite that deep due to on doing a really good job of keeping the rest of KT segmented away from that AD carry. 
And then Alex's like, okay, well, cuz, you got me. I have G8. <laughs> Watch me care. And at this point, KT making the call. Guys, this Baron can test. If it's a flip and we lose it, game's done. We're gonna try and fight. But will they actually be able to? Baron Power or Rebel Bear about like coming up here for BLG should yep. give them free prio in the lanes. And if they get this, that is the Hextech all over to them. I mean, is it gonna be a 4 0 LPL day or a 3 1? Can LCK get another? It all comes down to this to round it up as Cuz goes to the engagement. But look, once again, Keen is caught out. Shun finds him. BLG group up while the tanky nice. members go through with aiming. Is this his clutch factor coming through? He goes golden. He sets mm -hmm. up with BDD. Elk is out of there. The oh, KT oh, has a oh. clutch, but Bin has the swords out again. Mm -hmm. Stop the Cassante. Can you do it? Lehens runs for the hills while Cuz is left isolated. Just when you think aiming has done it all, they put him in the bin. And with that, that should be Soul going over to BLG. If they don't just make a mad dash for it, they do still have the Baron available. They don't have a lot of damage though. It's just Bin, Shun, and on. So they do lack the ability to go for the turrets very, very quickly. Well, but we're almost 40 minutes in the, into the game, right? I don't know if KT's gonna be able to clear the waves. Keen up in 20, but is that enough? It's massive. Again, Lahens has to watch it. 15 seconds will counter down Keen. To save the game, BLG with the Baron are going to break the base at the very least. On going to take the Hex Gate and with a Hex Tech Soul in the oh, back yeah. pocket, we have flipped this game. Enough Chronicler. On our first day of Worlds, we have sat on the seesaw. My backside's getting a little bit sore here. Got to get off the seesaw at some point. Maybe BLG are the ones to send us away. And crucially, their Cuz isn't able to actually make it onto the back line. And even though aiming goes in, there's so much stall to come through. Elk doesn't actually go down. And the amount of damage that Bin is able to do through this elongated fight is such a big problem, right? And, and that's even he before he uses done, his, uh, his stone plate. Yeah. And then this is the problem. The moment that BDD gets actually engaged on, you know, once Cassante is on top of Talia, you just die. There's not a whole lot you can do, even with a more shred-oriented build, like he went for. And as a result, aiming dead, BDD dead, there's not enough damage available for KT. Oh my god. Yeah. I like Cassante. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's not. yes, Cassante is a champion, but I gotta credit the bin. You do. Man's playing like a madman. I mean, it's great. Again, except for playing plays here in the series, rather, game. Feels like a series. It does. It does. It's 41 minutes in. I mean, look, it's gone quite a while. Look at the Hextech slow. It's annoying, isn't it? Aiming getting poked out as well by the Jace. Will LPL finish 4-0 and zero on their debut to Swiss? What a KT have left in this back pocket. You need to tell me, Chronicler, before they just run it in. I mean, Bin's tanking a turret. Great wall. Elk is caught. Bin's caught, but the ulti from Shun in response is massive. Cuz also poked out. The Hextech Soul is brilliant. And as BDD gets slow walking back to his base, BLG, I thought they were the ones caught out. And I think BLG ideally try to avoid flipping it on a final fight, right? Try to just poke them down, wear them out with Hextech. Fair so enough. look at those procs. Actually taking a fight, I think, is the one way that you lose this game. Because if somehow KT are able to, you know, get, get a Miracle Team fight, get into the back line, that's going to be the end of it. But knowing BLG, <laughs> That's not what they're gonna do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, they're willing to take a 4v5 before. They don't have Nash, though, so uh, actu actually pushing through when everyone in KT is up. Still, uh, still a hard thing to do. And we'll see if KT can hold on. At this point, the gold thing, not really the big thing, but it's more the map control that's available for BLG plus the hex stack. Cuz, the right. basic slingshot, it's onto on. Bin steps up, but he's out straight away. Cuz has gone a little bit deep, but. There's no follow-up damage, so he's okay for now. Kane's the one who took half his health just from the poke of BLG. And BLG, I think backing off here is still the right call, trying to set up vision. You have full map control, so making sure that you are first to the Dragon Pit, or the Baron Pit, rather, is what you're going to be looking towards. But the big uh, big benefit for BLG is that you can kind of posture yeah, towards Baron and just run down mid. Yeah. Right, and KT have to fully respond. Uh, and if they don't, if they make the wrong call, then but, uh, they might get Baron but traded for Nexus, which generally is considered not worth. And <laughs> if, uh, if they, they hesitate... As opposed to who? Who says that? Yeah, you, can, you, can, you can find 
It doesn't matter what opinion you have. You can find someone who, who think it, it might be worth it, you know? You know, previous World Team, shout out to SOFM uh, on suiting in the past. There have been games where previously, in previous years, SOFM has made that trade more than once in the LPL. Was he happy about it? Who no, knows? He got he enemy crugs. That was the main thing, but hey, in this game, KT trying to get whatever they can left of the remnants of their jungle. They're still behind 4,000 gold. Gold is getting to the point of being irrelevant, but still we're waiting for some of the final items on some of the final carries of this game. Yeah. I think we're going to get one more fight. I think we're going to get one more Baron at the very least, right? Or maybe it turns into the Elder as BLG have priority here, and it's KT who have to walk in. Look at the poke. Lands already taken down fairly low. They have all the vision. Lance goes in, doesn't actually end up working. Kuz, can he get it. in? They're going to flip it, but it's down. Never mind, you can't flip it when you have a Zaya. Kuz just has to run away for now as he flashed out of that before dying and making this a GG. And for BLG, you have two options. Either you go all in on mid, try to end it with this Baron power play. Third Baron of the game. Yep. Just running down mid, shove him out. As long as you can keep track of where this Aatrox is, Keen just hasn't been able to have a big impact, right? Aatrox is so reliant on actually getting onto the enemy backline. BLG has been doing a really good job of keeping him away from there. Or you just play it safe and, and you go for Elder and you go for the 100%. Now, I know what an LCKT would do. But this ain't one. It's BLG who, with Baron, are going to try and force their way in. Keen doing that with the GA. He's confident, but Finn mm -hmm. once again on top has been the better top winner. Nice. It's Cuz finds Elf with the feathers and landed once more. A shove back won't save the day, but Lahan's mm -hmm. trying what he can do. But the problem is his damage is getting resurrected. Aiming repositions. Oh, no. Elk stands strong. KT started with grins on their faces. But as the ace comes through, it is LPL who will start 4-0 and zero here on the Swiss stage at Worlds. It is BLG who will never say die. This game delivered what we expected from a fight between the number two seed of the LPL, number three from the LCK. And man, I don't know who's facing BLG in winners. I don't know who's facing KT in losers. We're gonna have a draw at the end of the day, but... Yeah, the one's rough. Hoo -hoo -hoo! That felt like a series. It was one best of one, Hysterics. Yeah. One. But it was great, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing this one again. Shout out to KT.